Hey there, everyone. I am Ashley Billington, and this is The Campfire. Today, we are taking a look at 15-6A. A lot of quality teams in this district from the Klein and Tomball area. After realignment, here are the teams of 15-6A. Klein, Klein Kane, Klein Collins, Klein Forest, Klein Oak, Tomball, Tomball Memorial, and Waller. If you remember last year, Tomball made the playoffs on the last day of the regular season and parlayed that into an improbable state semifinal appearance. Let's analyze these teams in our film session. Klein Collins is a favorite in this district. Last year, they went 0-4 in the non-district and then swept through district teams like a hurricane as the Tigers went undefeated in district play. Coach of the Year, Adrian Mitchell, has to be happy as he returns Newcomer of the Year, Tucker Parks, at quarterback and Chris Gant at defensive back. Once the postseason hit, Tomball was the Cinderella story as they went from last team in to a state semifinal game. They'll need to replace Cal Hallams at quarterback, but they return thousand yard rusher Christian Womack. Klein Kane lost a lot to graduation, but Jalen Smith will be someone to rely on at the wide receiver position. Klein Oak should be a title contender behind super athlete Kayla Black and quarterback PJ Hatter. If you're looking for a dark horse, how about Klein Forest? They have one of the best junior wide receivers in the state in Jelani Watkins and big Brad Spence on the line. Tomba Memorial and Klein are a little inexperienced but may need time to gel. Waller moves up from 5A and hopes their transition to 6A goes smoothly. I think one of the Klein teams may step up and take the district crown this year. But let's hear what our experts have to say. Houston Chronicle reporter John Foreman and producer Ward Fasold talk about these teams and our district breakdown. It's a district breakdown time. We are joined with John Foreman from the Houston Chronicle. When you talk 15-6A, you talk about the Klein schools, the Tomball schools, but they're adding Waller this year. How do you feel uh, this district is going to play out? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how some of these teams fare, uh, you know, with the offensive firepower that they lost to graduation. But you start with a defending champion and Klein Collins. You know that they're going to be in the mix at the top under Coach Adrian Mitchell. Uh, they're going to play tough defense. They're going to run the ball right at you. Um, you know, and, and so that's been a, a recipe for success for them in recent years. Uh, you kind of go down the line, though, the, the team that really had the best season out of that district was Tomball, uh, who was the fourth place team. Um, believe it or not, in the standings, they made it all the way to the state semifinals, um, you know, under coach Kevin Flanagan. Uh, just a, a historic year for the Cougars. Um, you know, they did lose some a lot of talent, including starting quarterback, dual threat guy, Kale Helms, who moved on to Army, um, you know, but the good news for Tomball is that they bring back a very talented running back, probably the top returning running back in the district uh, with Christian Womack, who rushed for over 1,300 yards and, and 21 touchdowns as a junior. So, you know, right off the bat, you look at those two teams and you know, you're kind of thinking that they're going to be in the mix at the top just based on what they did last year. Um, but then you look at Klein Oak, um, a really interesting team to me because they have a great quarterback receiver duo with P.J. Hatter and Kayla Black, uh, two really great athletes there. Um, Klein Kane, not sure um, about them. Obviously, they've had a lot of success in recent years as well, but they, you know, lose their starting quarterback, Carson Roper. Um, one of the best receivers in the city with Matthew Golden moving on to UH and uh, running back Ramir uh, McCray. So, you know, they're going to have some some spots to fill offensively. You know, you mentioned Waller coming into this district. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they fare. Uh, you know, they are still seeking their first winning season since 2015. So, you know, they've got some work to do, uh, especially in this district where it's, you know, it, there's some physical football being played every week. You know, a lot of these programs like to run the football and, and play good defense. So um, I would expect more of the same this season. All right. Talk to you later. The guys had much more to say on this district, and you can catch the entire district breakdown this Wednesday on our social media platforms. We've heard about the teams. Now let's take a look at some of the athletes to watch out for and our players on the rise. 
Probably the best returning quarterback in the district is Preston Hatter of Klein Oak. As a junior, Hatter was named second team all district as he threw for 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns, and only four interceptions. Hatter is blessed with some serious returning playmakers around him, which should make his senior campaign one to see. Parker Jenkins of Klein Forest could be one of the more overlooked running backs in the Houston area. His stats don't jump off the page, mainly because he played behind some talented upperclassmen. But this year, Jenkins will be ready to show out. He ran for 427 yards last year while catching 20 passes for 300 more yards. Jenkins' shifty moves out of the backfield has him offers from LSU, Florida, and Miami, among others. Tom Ball's Christian Womack is another running back to keep an eye out for in 2022. Womack rushed for almost 1,400 yards last year and 21 touchdowns for the Cougs. With an inexperienced quarterback taking the helm for Tom Ball this year, look for Womack to get more carries and even more leadership opportunities in the Cougar offense. On the defensive side of the ball, Klein Forrest's Brad Spence coming off the edge will be a problem. 72 tackles, including 11 for losses, is what Spence put on stat sheets last season. He also picked up a sack and a half as Spence hopes to lead the district in many defensive categories this year. Brad has offers from Washington State, Colorado, and Wisconsin, among others. These are some great athletes that can single-handedly change the course of the game. Earlier this week, our award for souls had a chance to talk to Klein Oak head coach Brandon Carpenter to see if he feels his Panthers can snag one of those playoff spots in our media day segment. Media day time, we're talking 15-6A, and we are here with Klein Oak head coach Brandon uh, Carpenter. Coach, let's talk about your district. Not a lot changed, but you did add Waller this year, uh, which means you don't have to hunt down one uh, one non-district game, right? So. Other than that, what do you, how do you feel the district may play out this year compared to other years? Man, District 15-6A is a fist fight every week. I mean, it is a very physical district. There's a lot of quality teams in it. Um, I mean, it, our approach going into this season is really no different than, than the previous, you know, years. We, we know we've got our hands full. We've got to be well prepared and well coached to have a chance. And uh, our kids are up for that, and we're, we're ready to see how it plays out. Talk about some of your, your guys on offense coming back. You talk about Caleb Black. He's a multi-offer guy. I don't even know how many he's up to now, and, and I don't mean that to sound the wrong way, but it, it's, it seems like every week somebody's coming in and, and he's, he's getting another offer. Um, you know, he's such a dynamic playmaker um, because he, he can affect the game in so many ways. You know, he, he's, a, he's an inside receiver, an outside receiver. We play him in the backfield. He'll be really important to us in the return game. Um, just a really dynamic guy, um, puts the ball in the end zone. I mean, there's a big premium for that when you're an offensive player. Um, you know, P.J. Hatter is one of the best athletes in the country. That kid is phenomenal. Um, his ability to play quarterback at the level he plays at is impressive. Uh, complete mastery of our offense, makes all the calls at the line. You know, we're anybody that's seen us play, man, we're a pre-snap, post-snap, RPO, read game team. And, um, man, he's, he's the captain of the ship back there with that. Um, you know, Keyshawn Wooten, like I mentioned, being an RPO offense, you know, you know, eight, 10, 12 years ago when, you know, you were handing the ball to the tailback, you know, 18 times a game, um, you know, his numbers would have been a lot better, a lot different. But with what we do on offense, he understands, you know, it's RPO. I may get it. I may not. Um, he's, he's critical in our pass protection stuff. He has great hands catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, does a lot of lead blocking in our quarterback run game. I mean, just the consummate glue of what really makes our offense work. I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for, for having me on and, and uh, Oakland. You can hear the entire interview with Coach Carpenter on our social media platforms this Friday, or you can hop on over to listen to the extended version of the campfire on our podcast, Inside High School Sports Houston, on iTunes and Spotify. That's going to do it for this week's show. Next week, we head over to Cyprus to talk District 166A. You can keep up with everything in the high school football scene on our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram accounts. Until next time, I am Ashley Bullington, and thank you for watching the campfire. <laughs>